So page nine. This is a quite important concept. If you think about, we have two linear, and we're trying to solve simultaneous equations. You not always can find one answer. Okay, there will be three different cases. So think about two linear. If you sketch two linear in the Cartesian plane, you will have three situations. Okay, I've already sketched for you. The first situation is they will intersect once. Okay, two linear can only intersect once if they intersect. So that's the first situation. The second situation is you have exactly the same two linear. So y equals to x plus one and y equals to x plus one. When you sketch it, that will be two identical lines overlap each other. And the third situation will be two different lines, but they're parallel to each other. If they're parallel to each other, you'll see like that. They never intersect. This will be the three different situations you can have when you're dealing with or when you sketch two linear. Uh, linear. So when we talk about solving simultaneous equations, we solve for x and the y value. If you solve for x and y value, which is the intersection? Okay, which is the intersection? So for the first case, the intersection is only once. That is the unique solution case. When you solve that, it will be the same as you look at the graph, find what is the intersection. For that graph, you find the intersection and that is a single point. So that's a unique solution. For the second case, we will have infinitely many solutions. So they are the same line. How many points they can intersect? Like think about two identical lines. How many things they have in common? Like infinitely many. Infinitely many. So that's the infinitely many solution case. So if you have two identical things, they will overlap each other. So all the points will be the solution. So what is solution? The intersection will be the solution. So how many points they intersect? Into infinite many points that intersects. So that's the infinite many solution case. That's number two. And number three is called no solution case. Why? Two parallel lines will not intersect to each other. Okay, so that's the no solution case. So when we will have two lines intersect each other. So the like if we have two linear, as I said at the beginning, y equals to x plus b and y equals to cx plus d, okay, ax plus b and cx plus d, for those two linears, uh, a and c are gradient, okay, a and c are gradient, so b and d are y-intercept, so ac is the gradient of two line and B, D are the Y intercept of two lines. So this is the gradient Y intercept form. Okay, Y equals MX plus C. That's the gradient and intercept form. So if you ask to achieve two lines with like intersection, the only requirement is A is not equals to C. Okay, they have different gradient. A cannot be the same as C. So they have different gradient, which means that will give you a unique solution. Okay, that will give you a unique solution. You don't really care about B and D. Okay, you don't really care about B and D because whatever like the y-intercept, they are the same or different, it doesn't matter. They can, if they have the same y-intercept, okay, they intersect at the y-intercept. It doesn't matter. But the only thing is you want them to intersect. You must have different gradients. So the only requirement is A is not equivalent to C. The second one is infinite many solution. You want two identical line, okay, two identical line. If you want two identical line, you need gradient to be the same and y-intercept to be the same. Okay, which means they are exactly the same line, 2x plus 1, 2x plus 1. They are exactly the same line. So the only way you can achieve infinite many solution is you have two identical like lines at A equals to C and B equals to D. So gradient equal, Y intercept equal. You will think, oh, that's very easy. Why we need to know that? I will uh, show you one example later and then you will understand why we are doing this. No solution case. Okay, no solution case. Parallel, but they can't be the same line. So what you require is gradient to be the same, but Y intercept are different. So Y intercept are different, which means that the family of graph, but like they have different place to intersect. Yes? So, like, the, not the definition, but like the idea of a family of lines, 
Sorry, can you ask your question? Like, so a family of mine means that they all cross over like one. Like family, yeah. Family or function means like they have something in common. They have something in common. They can either share the same gradient or they can all pass the same point. That's what we talked about yesterday. So those two lines are definitely family of functions because they all got the same gradient. They are belongs to one family. Uh, but we are not talking about that. What we talk about is how we can achieve two lines which are parallel but they are not the same. So to achieve that, we want the same gradient but we want different y-intercept to make sure that there are different lines but they have this, they have parallel properties. So. The question, okay, this is very easy to understand. Like for example, I give you y equals to 3x plus 1 and y equals to 4x minus 2. Can you tell me how many solutions you will have for the simultaneous equation? One. Unique solution, yeah, one solution. So if I give you in that format, it's very straightforward to see it, right? Well, if I give you... How many solutions do you get for that one? Unique, infinite many, or no solution? How you can how you can tell? Like the my, my question is not really ask you to answer my question. How you can tell what is that? Yes. You want to rearrange it first to make it look at y equals mx plus c form and then say they have the same gradient or they have the same y-intercept or they have not the same gradient so we have unique solution. If you can rearrange that, you make the 2x to that side, you get a minus 2x and divide by 4, you have minus half. Okay, that gradient is minus half. For the bottom one, you move the minus 4x that way and divide by 6. That's a minus 2 on 3, which you got different gradient. So different gradient will give you one solution. So in this case, you have one solution here. Okay, quite easy to understand so far. Then the question in the VC exam, I'm not going to ask you in this way. How many solutions are there? So the way they will ask you is... Okay, don't worry about next page. Next page is my full notes to solve a complete question. Okay, so a complete question. When you forget, you can always go back to this page and look at this page to figure out how to do this type of questions. This is just my solution, okay? Every single step, you should be able to understand that. Uh, so we will go to page 12. Okay, we'll go to page 12. Let me have a look. So I want to do those two questions as example on page in page twelve. So, okay, uh, if you can go page eleven, the main question is there. For the following simultaneous equation, okay, can, first of all, can you see there are linear equations? Uh, k is just a number. Like k is a number. Like I don't know what number is that, but k is a number. It is in the form of ax plus by equals to c. Oh, let's say equals to n. That is in this form. So we know that is a linear. And the second one is a linear as well. Okay, so we have two linear equations. So now the question asks you, for the following simultaneous equations, determine the value or the values of k, where k is a real constant. Okay, k is a real constant, k is a number, such that there will be one unique solution. No, no solutions and infinitely many solutions. Okay, so what k value can give you those three situations? Because k is not a fixed number, you can change the number. For example, I change k to uh, 4, then I will have unique solution. Okay, when I change to 5, I have infinitely many solutions. So for different k values, you have different simultaneous equations and you have different number of uh, answers. So therefore, what we will do is, let's look at question C. kx minus 2y equals to kn, 5x plus y equals to 7. 
as the question I ask you for the second time, like 2x plus 4y equals to what? And the other is 3x plus 6y equals to how you can tell they are parallel or not. You need to rearrange it into the form of y equals to mx plus c. Okay, this is not the only method we do it. Well, after we learn matrices, we will introduce a new method to do it that will be easier to do. But like now, you, this is the only way you can do that. So now I want you to rearrange both equations into the form y equals to mx plus c. Okay, one minute sh should be able to do that. Rearrange two equations into the form of y equals to mx plus c. So clearly label what is the gradient, what is the y-intercept. Okay, after you rearrange it, you will have something similar to that. If you finish, you can check the board. I prefer the way of k over 2 times x. I don't want to see kx over 2. Why I don't want that? Because you can't, some, sometimes you can't see, oh, what is my gradient? Last year I see one student writing this way, and finally they... Uh, she confused herself to say, oh, kx over 2 is the gradient, and then use that to keep going like with the calculation. And then finally, she's so confused why there's an x in my calculation. Like, that's the problem. So normally, I want to separate into the way m times x plus c. So k over 2 is the gradient, and times x minus k plus uh, over 2 is the y-intercept. All right. So now... Let's talk about a unique solution. Okay, my question is how we can achieve unique solution? How? What can't be the same? So, okay, in this case, what two things can't be the same? Yeah, k over 2 and minus 5 can't be the same. Okay, in this case, k over 2 can't be this can't be negative five. So what k can't be? What k can't be? Minus ten. Minus 10. Okay, so in this case it tells us if k is not minus ten, we will have unique solution. I don't care what I have, but I just can't be negative five. If it's not negative five, everything's good. Okay, we are happy about that. So Unique solution, you will say k can be everything else except negative 10. Well, we will introduce function notation in chapter 5. So, oh, uh, chapter 5, yeah, chapter 5. So, let's just keep our notation like that. After we finish that, we can come back and make it in the interval notation. But so far, it's all right. k can't be negative 10. So, k can be everything else but not negative 10. Okay. For the second one, what do we need? We need, um, let's say, no solution first. Okay, try to remember the graph. In which case do you have no solution? Same gradient and? Same or different? No solution. Different. Okay, different y intercept. So what do we need is k over 2 equals to negative 5. But at the same time, negative k over 2 cannot be 7. Right? I want to achieve that. That means same gradient, but different y-intercept. That's no solution. So this will give me k equals to negative 10. This will give me k not equals to negative 10. 14. Okay, k not equals to negative 14. What's 
the conclusion? I have find first requirement. I have find second requirement. What is the conclusion? Everyone agree with that? K equals to negative 10. So the first requirement is I need K to be negative 10. It must be negative 10. The second requirement is can be anything else except negative 14. So negative 10 will be the only solution. Okay, because the first one said it must be negative 10. The second one said uh, it doesn't matter if it's just not negative 14. So in the end, we'll have negative 10. The third one is the interesting one, is the infinitely many solutions. Okay, for infinitely many solutions, what do we need? Same gradient and same y-intercept. Okay. This one give me k equals to minus 10. This one give me k equals to negative 14. What is our conclusion? It's an interesting one. Well, it needs to satisfy both at the same time. Do we have a value to satisfy both at the same time? No, okay? So you also will be no such k value. To give infinitely many solutions. No such k value. Like, I just can't find any k value to give me something with the same gradient and same y-intercept which means I want the same line. But there's no such k-value to give me the same line. So I failed to find one k-value to give me infinite many solution. So there's never such case in this question have to have infinite many solutions. So you also will be no such k-value to give infinite many solution. Okay, you can't say I can take both or I pick this one, not the other one. It must satisfy at the same time. It must be satisfied at the same time. This is a nice and easy question to start with. The calculation is not hard. It's all linear calculations. Um, we just go for one more, access, uh, one more question, which is part B. We use exactly the same idea. Okay, we use exactly the same idea to find the gradient and y-intercept. So first of all, please help me to rearrange the equation to make y to be the subject, like in the form of y equals to mx plus c. This is a little bit complex compared to the other one. If you finish, you can have a look and check for that. There will be more than one way to write about it, but my way it will be the most clear way to see it. Okay, it's the clearest way to see what is the green and what is the white intercept. I want to put all the y intercept all together in one place. I can say, okay. This bit is my y-intercept. I don't want to separate to three different parts and say, oh, that's my y-intercept. 
So that's why I put k plus 10 all on the numerator. So. First of all, have a think about do you have questions to re do you have problems with rearranging those equations? Okay, shouldn't have much problem with that. But like if you are not in the same format as mine, um, just trying to think why I'm doing this way. Okay, why I'm doing this way. Uh, the next thing is I want you to write about unique solution. Okay, I want you to write about unique solution. What do you need to achieve unique solution? Okay, it's exactly the same as before. Okay, I want to achieve unit. unique solution okay unique solution you want two gradient not to be the same okay um, in this case I think it's still possible to solve directly by using the inequality sign but just let you know sometimes solve inequality sign like not equal is quite hard so what I will do is I will solve when they are equal first okay I'll solve the equality first okay I, I don't want them to be the same so I will solve when it will be the same and after I solve out when they will be the same at k equals 2 plus minus 2 then I will come back to say oh k can't be plus minus 2 this is a method well this equation is still possible to solve by using this not equal sign like multiple, uh, cross multiplication but if you use more complex like numbers or expression it will be hard to solve by using that sign so better to solve it using equal sign and then go back to say it can't be those two numbers and then if we talk about second with no solution again with no solution I need the two gradient to be equal to each other and I want Yes? Question? No? Oh, good. Uh, I want no solution, so I need gradient to be the same, but y-intercept can't be the same. Okay, y-intercept can't be the same. No solution. They are not at the same point. Okay, no solution. They should look like this. 
Okay, at different y intercept, at different y intercept. So again, this one, instead of solve them to be not equal, I will solve somewhere here to make them equal first. I will solve for equation, the, this equal. Okay, so I will have k times k plus 10 equals to 24. k squared plus 10k minus 24 equals to 0. Yes? Yeah, k is not equals to plus minus 2. What you need is... Hmm? No, no, no. k can be anything else except those two. Right. Like, can be all the numbers, any number, like just not those two. Okay. So, there will be a better expression, like say, in the step notation, r except minus 2 plus 2. But we haven't learned that yet. So, okay. it's good enough to say k not equals to those two parts. Uh, for that one, and I can factorize that uh, plus 12 and then minus 2. Okay, minus 24. Yep, that worked. Uh, so in this case, I'll have k equals to minus 12 or a equal, uh, k equals to 2. Okay. I have so for the equal. Okay, so for the equal. And then I can go back to make the conclusion. So from greed and equal, I will have k equals to plus minus 2. For those two not equal, I will have k equals to minus, tw minus, minus 12 and 2. What is your conclusion? Hmm? Oh, is it not equal? Uh, not, not equal. Okay, not equals to negative 12 and 2. So what's your conclusion? K equals to negative two. negative two. Okay, so this one will be k equals to negative two. Okay, you don't want k to be that. You don't want k to be that. You k can be those two in this case. So intersection will be k equals to negative two. Okay, can't be that. Can't be that. Then for the infinitely many solutions, what is your conclusion? You can directly tell because we have enough calculation here already. So what you need is, well, I may better write it again. You need the gradient to be the same and you need the y-intercept to be the same. Okay, gradient to be the same and y-intercept to be the same. What I will have for that is k equals to plus minus 2 and for that k equals to minus 12 and 2. So conclusion here will be k equals to 2 only. Okay, k equals to 2 only. This is a good example because every part you have a value. Okay, k equals to 2, k equals to negative 2, and k is not equals to plus minus 2. You can see this question is quite easy to understand. The, the most important thing is to rearrange the equation into the form y equals to mx plus c. When you can recognize what is the uh, gradient and what is the y-intercept, then everything is easy to solve. Any questions from this exercise? No? Okay, so I'll just stop the recording.